the nation's chief opening the second Grand Bahama Tech Summit. We have an update on the Grand Lucayne Resort. And the Regency Theater bringing one of America's greatest musical productions to the big stage. The Bahamas Tonight Northern Edition starts now. This is the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening, all. I'm Shashino Roll Farkerson. As always, it is so great to have you with us. Topping news, the nation's leader, Prime Minister, the Most Honorable Dr. Hubert Minnis, officially opening the second annual Grand Bahama Technology Summit this morning at the Grand Lucayne Resort under the theme, The Future is Now. During the opening ceremony, the Prime Minister announced plans to advance technology in the country. We have team coverage of this morning's session, and we begin with Megan Shepard. The government of the Bahamas in conjunction with the Grand Bahama Technology Steering Hub Committee hosting the second Grand Bahama Technology Summit at the Grand Lucayne Resort. In an effort to promote the island of Grand Bahama as the technology hub of the Caribbean, the summit brings together top national and international experts in the technology industry. Opening the summit on Wednesday morning, the nation's leader, the most honorable Dr. Hubert Minnis. At this year's summit, we will also advance discussions on the framework and regulatory procedures to encourage and support cryptocurrency assets and related instruments. Companies that utilize blockchain technology as a basis for their new products and services represent the genesis of a new wave of innovation. There is no reason why these blockchain technology companies that have their eyes on global markets cannot have their base operations here in our Bahamas. The Prime Minister also announcing that the government is revamping the immigration policy and procedures in order to attract new enterprises. We will make our immigration policy more attractive for investments. We are now considering draft legislation to create a special BH-1B visa, keeping with recommendations made by the Grand Bahama Technology Steering Committee. Noting that the government must work for its citizens in new and innovative ways, he adds that an e-government transformation has begun. He says that the government will explore ways to increase and integrate online services in order to provide more efficient and effective services to residents. These include providing a single online window facility through which multiple services can be accessed. Interoperability for transporting data security between relevant agencies and clients. Data ownership and retraining for citizens and public officers. Paramount to our success is strengthened, strengthened partnership with you, our domestic, international, and regional partners and stakeholders. Now the Prime Minister concluded his keynote address by noting that it is an exciting era in innovation that is sure to transform the islands of the Bahamas. We now go to our Italia Hall who picks up the story. Well, Megan, following the Prime Minister's keynote address, was the first speaker of the morning, which was the Vice President of Government Affairs for Cisco Systems, Jeff Campbell. He focused on the advancement of technology across the world. We have to make technology and education part of the curriculum available to all as the opportunity for the future for people. Not something to do on the side, not something to just think about later or only for a small number of people who are you know, going to be the software engineers of the future. We have to recognize that understanding, using, and adapting to technology is going to be part of almost every job of the future. And we have to build it into the curriculum. We have to get it to the children at, at, at uh, the ages at which they're going to uh, learn and grasp it and go forward. He says Cisco often talks about country digital acceleration. It's kind of a fancy way of saying, you know, how do you embrace digitization? How do you make it part of what you are doing and try to drive it forward quickly for the competitiveness uh, and, and the efficacy that it can bring uh, to a country. So 
It involves many things, the first of which is political leadership. If you don't have a commitment from a government to want to do this, it's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. It, it doesn't happen organically. People have to think about this and drive it through. You have to have public and private sector uh, working in partnership going forward uh, in order to bring all aspects of society focusing on it as well. Um, and the third area, which is the area that people don't think about as much, but is equally critical as skills. The government executed a memorandum of understanding with Cisco Systems, which provides the framework for the Office of the Prime Minister, along with the Ministry of Education, to explore the development of educational opportunities for Bahamians. The Minister of Education, the Honorable Jeff Lloyd, says the move is a great opportunity for the Ministry of Education. It is a, a great moment for us here in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas to be joined in this occasion to establish an understanding with Cisco Systems, a world famous uh, technological company, to be now number 27 in the Caribbean and the second academy, which will join in operational systems, learning systems for the benefit of our citizens. It is really a wonderful thing and I'm very, very proud, very grateful to this great opportunity to share in this uh, auspicious occasion for our young people. Following the brief ceremony, the government and a delegation then toured the tech exhibition. The three-day summit will close out on Friday. Reporting for ZNS Network News, I'm Italia Hall. Meanwhile, Prime Minister, the Most Honorable Dr. Hubert Minnis, also addressing the state of Grand Bahama's economy while attending the Grand Bahama Technology Summit this morning. He provided an update on the Grand Lucayne Resort. Here's Italia Hall with this report. The nation's leader, Prime Minister, the Most Honorable Dr. Hubert Minnis, says the government is now in the process of preparing separation packages for employees of the Grand Lucayne Resort. I've not been intimately involved. We have a particular committee, but they know that they must follow the laws of the Bahamas and under no circumstances are we to compromise or marginalize any Bahamian. The Prime Minister says the government remains focused on finding a suitable buyer for the Grand Lucayne Resort. He says 20 groups are showing interest in the hotel property. About seven looks very serious. So the committee that's dealing with it, um, they will aggressively pursue. But we want to ensure that um, whomever purchase the hotel would have the funds to um, carry it forth to the future and in the division of the Bahamas. The nation's leader says he believes the future for Grand Bahama is bright. I think with time we'll have the hotels sold. Um, we have a great project for Grand Bahama that hopefully we'll, we will announce very soon. I won't give a commitment, a date, because the press will hold me to that. When asked for details about that project, the Prime Minister says more information will be revealed soon. He also had this response for persons who say the government is not doing much for Grand Bahama. Grand Bahama has had a stormy time. Um, Grand Bahama was in a recessionary period even before the world ended the recession. And we have been working very aggressively, concentrating especially on Grand Bahama. When you look at what's happening in the other family islands, Abaco, almost 100% employment, North Lutra, Exuma, um, San Salvador. And we hope that Grand Bahama will fall in the same category with time. But we're working day and night to ensure that we have the right sustainable product. We don't just want a microwave product. We want a product that's sustainable and would be very futuristic so that it will benefit not only this generation but the future generation. He says the government is also working to increase airlift to Grand Bahama. Reporting for ZNS Network News, I'm Italia Hall. Thank you, Tally. Meanwhile, Resorts World Bimini releasing a statement on plans to close the resort temporarily early next year. The statement says the resort will be closing on January 5th and will reopen on January 18th, 2019. During this time, officials say improvements will be made to the resort and that there will be no staffing changes. The release adds that upon reopening, Silver Airlines will begin a new daily service schedule from Fort Lauderdale. Additionally, Silver Airlines co-chair partnerships will connect customers from other key markets such as New York and New Jersey. Officials say they look forward to presenting an enhanced schedule of events and entertainment in 2019 with new travel partnerships and packaging on the FRS Ferry and Silver Airlines. 
Switching gears now, police say they are still looking for 57-year-old David Arlington Colebrook of Number 1 Jasmine Gardens, New Providence. He is wanted by the Drug Enforcement Unit in Grand Bahama for possession of dangerous drugs with the intent to supply. He is described as standing 5 feet 10 inches tall, weighing between 240 to 260 pounds, with dark brown complexion and heavy build. Now, if you have any information on the whereabouts of David Arlington Colebrook, you are Acts to contact the police. You can call them at telephone numbers 350-325-911-919 or you may call your nearest police station. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Stay with us. There's more news right after the break.